All right, continuing on with uh, gas metal arc welding, we're going to talk about when you get started with the process. There's about three things that you're going to have to adjust uh, when you're getting started with un GMO. The first of which is your, after talking about that, your gas flow based on your situation, environment, that kind of thing. You're going to have to adjust, of course, your uh, voltage. Again, dealing with settings associated with materials and uh, the wire size, that, that sort of thing, and then of course your wire speed. How fast the thing takes off when you pull down the trigger. Those are your three adjustments associated with GMOL that actually have a major impact on the success of your operation. Again, the good news is that for most combinations of wire size, situations, uh, application, there are plenty of charts and uh, guides for you to adjust your settings. Even the manufacturer has data that you can provide to get yourself set up before you get started. And granted, it's always fun just to hop in there and take off and go, but the reality is proper settings are the key to success. Keep in mind that some of these settings, especially associated with your gas, are going to be in CFH, cubic feet of gas per hour. And your voltage changes that you make are just adjusting the power supply within an, in the unit itself. And also a great advantage of these machines is typically they have a little bit more intelligence to them and they can adjust and compensate for as we learned that when you pull the trigger down and the wire starts going through your current and uh, is adjusted your voltage maintains con consistency unless settings are made and your actual system will actually hold voltage at a level value which is great now something that's a little bit different in GMOL than uh, your typical arc welding or shielded metal is what we refer to as transfer There are three kinds of transfers that can occur, and again, all these are based on settings, essentially, and technique. Take a look. Actually, first, let's give, identify them, and then we'll take a look about that. First one is what we refer to as spray. Spray transfer. And you'll see it best by looking here. Here we go. Spray transfer results from a couple things, uh, higher, typically higher voltages, um, different uh, gas mixtures and um, used for flat and horizontal positions and what you can see from the example here is that the uh, actual conductor or the actual filler is transferred in these globule type forms or small drops so spray transfer you know the consumable is converted into drops and just kind of used there um, I'd say the, the better thing would be look at a computer model of this, but let's just get the terms down first. It typically going to go for uh, thicker metals and where you need fast uh, fast deposits. So a uh, operation with a little bit more high end, a little bit more splatter associated with it, and thicker metal may be involved. The next one is globular. This is sort of like spray in the fact that you are creating droplets, but you're actually creating them in bigger, bigger chunks. Um, so in our globular, here we go, we're actually creating globs on the end of the wire. And as a result, they actually get two or three times bigger than the wire diameter and eventually sort of fall off. Now in this operation, we're going slower and we're using slower wire speeds. The end result is you have globs of droplets that are forming and you're using thinner materials where you don't want to penetrate as much. So thinner metals is the target for globular, a little slower operation or slower speeds. Um, and some of the advantages, or I guess one of the things you understand is, you know, a lot of the arc is causing the, the actual filler material to form here and just drop down so we're not burning through as much on our actual base essentially creating minimum heat input into the base itself. Now, there's a drawback in this. Yes, it works for thinner stuff, but it, it's actually hard to control. It means that you're going to basically have less arc control, uh, splittering out kind of, or what they refer to as arc stability. So, less number of ap applications with globular uh, because of some of that skill level and um, requirements to make it work. Now the other one is the 
short circuiting. Should have just typed that out probably. Short circuiting. All right, sorry about that. Short circuiting. So in this process, let's take a look. The pictures always work out better for us. We're getting closer. You know, we're bringing in the nozzle in closer to your actual base metal. And as you can see, the metal just comes, or the actual filler comes down and just makes contact and short circuits. So therefore it immediately arcs close. Some of the advantages, it, you know, it's your kind of like your medium or uh, your basic, uh, maybe moderate is the better way to use it. Your moderate penetration applications um, can you be used in a lot of all the positions available and a variety of electro diameters. So this one's part of your, sort of your go-to uh, transfer process. So some of your more challenging, obviously, is the globular. The spray and the short or short circuiting is probably a little bit, you know, easier to accomplish and more moderate or the, you know, the go-to move. And the spray transfer a little bit trickier, and then the glob more tricky than that. And you know, it kind of depends on personality too, in terms of your skill level and which one you like the most. Key thing is that we can use a lot of, we can do a lot of quick things with your short circuiting. Now, in the overall GMAL process, there are a lot of factors. As we've learned, your voltage, your wire speed, your gas. Um, all your gas concentrations all make a difference in your process. Another issue is the actual speed of, your, of travel. You know, how fast are you moving along in your welding process? That affects the, the overall, you know, quality of work. And that, while we're on the topic quality of work, that's one of the reasons that GMAW was even created is because it creates a little bit more purity. Although quality and purity are not exactly the same terminology, one of the advantages of the GMAW process is that since we had that you know nozzle with the gas creating the shielding effect without having to burn out the flux it it created a more pure weld or a, a pure uh, composition of the two which means less cleanup less obviously slag problems are not there like they are with uh, shielded and you know you just you got a better result so that's why the whole gmol was process was created and it's become very very popular but anyway back to my my main point there so your travel of your work affects your quality. Your travel, let's see, your travel speed, we should say. Travel speed, your travel angle, whether or not you're doing a push or a pull, and your weld type, joint, metal thickness, and composition. And um, one of the neat things about the push-pull with this process is that affects your actual uh, penetration levels too, depending on how you operate. But again, that's kind of stuff you'll learn in some other classes. We just like to address it here. One of the great things about that, one of the great things about GMO in terms of overall applications and its advantages, obviously purity is is one. And the other fact is there's hard, not nearly as many interruptions. For example, in GMO, you probably can you could probably weld all the way through one wire before you know you won't get through a wire on one weld process. So in, in difference to SMO, you know you're not changing out electrodes. So that's great. More continuity in your work. And it's also well suited for automation. What you'll find most robotic welding operations, especially the things that are coming online nowadays, is that GMAW is the process to go because it's all based on control and positioning with not as many um, issues that you run into with SMAW. So it's, it's favorable for manufacturing automation in terms of welding. Especially consider you try to imagine a robotic arm changing an electrode for a, a, a small. It's pretty funny to think about actually. Anyway, with GMAL they don't have to, they just keep running the wire feed. And as we mentioned, no flux means no slag, or you know, less issues to dip, less chance of slag. So therefore less cleanup and a finer, higher quality finish. So GMAL is very much a common process in the welding. In fact it's just, you know, it's it's one of the go-to things to use. Um, a couple other things or notes to keep in mind with uh, the GMAL. It has a uh, high quality, you have a lot more control with penetration. We have more purity, which means we can uh, get away with less slag and, and less cleaning, which is always great. And one of the other benefits, it can be used with, uh, let me just type these out, ferrous and non-ferrous. 
So this process itself, just for the ex explanation, arc welding, can, or I'm sorry, G-MOL can be used with ferrous and non-ferrous, which means if it has iron in it, it's ferrous, and if it doesn't have iron in it, it's non-ferrous. Aluminum, for example, is a non-ferrous metal, whereas obviously steel is ferrous because it has iron in it. So, hopefully that uh, gives you some a good grasp of the G-MOL experience and you know some of its advantages disadvantages it is a very advantageous process that's why you know it's very very common and um, has its automation effect the fact that it can actually control more things where it's got the safety fixtures of the triggers controlling the current does have some big advantages for us so anyway uh, we'll also post out some links for some training videos and tutorials to kind of see the stuff in action um, we've got several different variations of them that you can check out and hopefully find some useful information with that as well. From here on out, uh, well, I guess that's it. We'll see you on the next one.